You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Old School Wrestling After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Old School Wrestling After Show. What are you guys reaching for? Flies over there? Uh, the lights. I mean, like... Oh, jeez. And then you're... Shiny golden. objects. Well, welcome to uh, Old School Wrestling. This is my favorite part of the show because we can go back in time and look at some of the old matches from years ago. We had when we started in 1938, which was really kind of weird to see that in black and white. It was on film, of course, not TV. But I have the New York Knockout sitting next to me again. Hi, everybody. And with her opinions. Hello. And then we have Chris Mastro. Hello. We have Fern Owens. Hola. And we have Hola. Cheryl Rusa. Hi. Hi. Hey, uh, hey, hey. You're looking so sexy today, and I love the yellow bikini panties. Those are <laughs> those are not bikini panties. They're not. They're yellow. No. Okay. They are yellow yes, though. I saw them. I'm wearing a skirt. You're looking at the bottom of the skirt. Here, flash you. Ooh. I feel violated just sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> this show this show starting off pretty good. That's a, yeah, that's my I thought skirt was totally <laughs> something different. That's my favorite that's color too. Leave it to a guy to, to see a a girl's skirt oh, when I she's have. like like all the way down to the floor here but 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 yeah <laughs> I, I looked at i looked over at you and you looked at me and you suddenly your knees kind of oh, yeah opened that's up. it i know i was like look at this rick there's Here's dessert bad. <laughs> oh, man. i noticed these things Guys, well, i went to johnny rockets for a milkshake i got screwed i told you i've been around more than a hula hoop so <laughs> there you go <laughs> um fern let me ask you a question Yes, sir. I know you like old school style. I love it. And you incorporate it in your shows and your own wrestling. I do. And uh, this is all about that. And tell, let's talk about it for a minute. Today, you don't see a whole lot of it? You don't because a lot of uh, independent wrestling shows and mainly places like Japanese wrestlers like to do a thousand and one holds and spots. And yeah. they superman each other. You see a guy take like 44 chops and yeah. 22 forearms and a kick and get right up and do five power bombs and a DVD driver, and there's still 30 more minutes left in the match. Yeah, exactly. What's yeah. your feelings on that? Uh, I hate it. Miss Knockout? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of years we see somebody come out with a fake gun and shoot their opponent and then get back <laughs> up and oh, continue the match. God. <laughs> it's a, it, that would be interesting. <laughs> well, straight Looney Tunes. <laughs> well, it's the Roman times. You've seen everything oh, in no. wrestling. Yeah. What else do you want? Let's you know tear each other's heads off, put it in a microwave. Press four minutes and boom. Oh, well, <laughs> no, they'll you know? edit that out. You know, the original uh, first couple episodes, of, uh, seasons of Glow, they had a bunch of stuff that you couldn't do. They, they started editing out. They came over at whatever, the FCC or whoever controls all that stuff, and stopped it. The, uh, there was an axe in the ring, a chainsaw, a blowtorch. Mm -hmm. um, there was a cleaver, a shot with cleaver in hand, like trying to chop somebody's... But then really? they said, oh... Wow. Oh, like uh, the the you know uh, your Superman and the kid sees you and wants to jump off the roof with it, with a towel tied around his neck and it's the TV show's fault. And that oh, never yeah. worked. Oh yeah. I don't yeah. know. I think my. And why did Smallville stay on for ten years? <laughs> I think my it's new not finisher. Wrestling. My new finisher is going to be eating someone's face. Oh, that's. Oh wait a minute! Some guy just did that in Florida. I know. That's I saw it on TV, it. and I'm gonna do it. You saw it? I want to see it. <laughs> I saw the. He's the, been watching The Walking the Dead. Face. <laughs> he said, what was he on? The bath, bath salt or he something? He said Night of the Living. Saying? He said, "What's Some it? Sort of Romero. Color. He's a Romero fan." Well, what did he have in uh, wrestling or practice yesterday? Aaron was biting somebody's neck. 
I did that. I was, oh, you did that. I was working the throat, and then Jeez. to put it over the top, I figured it's working such a... Working the, the throat. throat. That's, <laughs> I figured that's such a deadly region that I might as well that's, just go straight murderous and bite the guy's said. throat. That's what he said. You had the other man's sweat in your mouth. I think you had other intentions. Yum. Playboy. Jeez. You've lost a lot of weight. Yes. You know uh, how, I notice mo how I notice most? Why? All your freckles are coming together. You're looking really tan. <laughs> <laughs> just one yeah. big freckle now. I, it's, it's weird. I could lose weight. Uh, I could lose about 40 or 50 pounds in a month. R and really? this time I did it eating healthy. Must I can gain nice. it in two days. Must be nice. Yeah, I could, I'll gain it just as fast. You'll see. If I eat a big meal, I'll see it. If I work out, I'll instantly see results. I, it's weird like that. No, it's good. It's really good. Uh, not for me. Indo? Wait, not endomorph. Ecto. That would be a uh, ectomorph. Ectomorph. Yeah. There you go. Ectomorph. Yes. Ecto ectomorph is round and and um, and full, and mesomorph is muscular, and endomorph is or ectomorph is skinny. No, mesomorph. Mesomorph. Mesomorph is muscular. Yeah, that's well, you can gain real easy. That's mesomorph. Yeah, my didn't, didn't say muscle. She said oh, oh, yeah, okay. I can gain fat <laughs> really easy. It just takes a couple TV dinners. And All right. <laughs> that's the other one then. <laughs> I have a uh, I have a video I want to put up with uh, Marissa. It's Lord James Blears and B Michelle. Uh, Leone. Let me tell you a little bit about these guys. Lord Blears was uh, a wrestler back from England, and he, he also ran the promotion in Hawaii when I went over to the wrestle. And Michelle Leone used to hang out. This is Michelle Leone right there. He used to hang out down in Muscle Beach. Uh, 80 years old, he'd ride his bike back and forth from Venice to Santa Monica, always real tan, perfect white teeth, long black hair, healthiest guy in the world. He crossed Santa Monica Boulevard one day, got hit by a car and killed Oh. Just like that. I mean, the guy never had one thing wrong with him physically, and then that car hit Which him. goes oh. back to the, your point about why can't we do steroids? I mean, we can die from a peanut. We can die yeah. from getting hit by a <laughs> exactly. truck. Drinking too much water. Screw yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do it. Let's do a steroid shake and turkey sandwich after this. <laughs> I mean, you. Well, you know, if anybody, if anybody dies who did steroids, then they'll automatically blame it on the steroids. Of course. Of course. It has, nothing a, to do, it has nothing to do with environment, nope. genetics, nope. and <laughs> or ADD. Nope. Yes. AD, has anyone died from ADD? I guess uh, not. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, let's do a documentary and no. follow you around, sir, and let's you, see what I happens. I bet you they have. <laughs> Nobody would ever know. <laughs> Is that video going to run, Marissa? I'm already running. Yep. Here we go. Okay. He looks in that. This is before. He this, died, I so. believe, is the Olympic Auditorium. How old is he right here? He looks great right here. He's probably That's a sick mullet. 35 or so. <laughs> what? 40 maybe. He looks like uh, De Niro. <laughs> this, uh, there, like and that's, uh, <laughs> that is um, Lord Blair's back Somebody's there. Somebody's back? Lord Blair's, uh, Laura Blair's was his daughter, was a surfing championship in Hawaii, but he ran. We'd wrestle over there on uh, Wednesday nights at the HIC Auditorium, full house. That's not, that's not the shows. Lord. That's a plantain guy. It looks like the peanut guy. The plantain. Like yeah. I this love is, it when a big, heavy, heavy guy wears a coat. This is, <laughs> this is, uh, this is Joel Strongbow. He was the promoter. He's pretty young then. I worked for him, too. White was he corner. nice? Oh, yeah. Good guy. Racist. <laughs> Whoa. He's the planters. <laughs> planters peanuts. Yeah. Had the best deal going to Hawaii for him. He paid your plane fare, paid your room on the Waikiki Circle Motel was eight dollars a night, and then one hundred fifty bucks for the show. And this is back in seventy one. That's a lot of money. Why don't we have more promoters like that now? Yeah, it's a good deal. It was a vacation. I stayed Wednesday, Friday, and come next Saturday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Weighing two hundred and fourteen pounds, the heavyweight champion of the Pacific Coast. From Italy, Baron Michel Leone. He was very, very popular back then. Wow, very defined features. Yeah. He's like, he's like a cartoon. He looks like he should be on the head of a coin. He yeah. looks like, uh, like, based on a cartoon. Yeah. Yes, he does. I would root for him just because of his hair. <laughs> That's me. Poor guy died at 80. One of the nicest guys in the world. He should have looked both ways. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, is, it, is, it's, is that his championship belt? Look at that. I was going to say, look at the size of the belt. It's the thing. Show. See, that's like boxing, though, back in the day. They were uh -huh. real small. Uh -huh. It shows how everything just got bigger and better in right. wrestling yeah. over yeah. the years. That looks like a size for a woman's uh, champion belt, you know? It's even smaller. Not even that. as, yeah, yeah, even smaller. That looks like a belt that holds your pants up. <laughs> I got a cord. You talking about those little yellow pants she has on? You have a rope. Yeah, electrical cord. <laughs> that's a fall. Out of his ornate robe and his tunic. These guys look so thin to me there because they, they got heavier as, as they got older. That's how I knew them. A tunic. A tunic. 
This had to be about 1951. Into the standard black tights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, nothing, nothing elaborate. He said he doesn't have a belly button. No. Nobody had belly well, buttons. Look, if, you look at, if you look at the audience, you won't see any kids there. Well, yeah, this isn't PG. I mean, come on. No, but I mean, it, the, the point is, is that kids didn't go to wrestling back then. It was maybe, all adults. Maybe their parents cared. Well, <laughs> not just that. This was more <laughs> believable, more realistic, and yeah. they gambled yeah. on this. Yeah. Oh, they did. I mean, this was like evenings going out, you know, in the 30s and the 40s. Plus, they, maybe they didn't want their kids to be beating each other up. Right. <laughs> it's interesting to, see, interesting to see what they use for holds. They're a little bit different than today. It's more grappling. Grabbing the ear and working the ear with you. Uh, for anyone who had one ear to work with, of course. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Yes, it is. But their finishers were like nothing. Well, see, that's what I loved. You didn't have to give them everything. Less is more. Right. That's why it was so much more believable. Their finishes were yeah. actual finishes. They've got way more... Uh, I guess basic wrestling moves. Basic wrestling moves. But they are real moves. They're yeah. you know solid moves. Are you guys saying the razor's edge is not a believable wrestling move? <laughs> Especially when you kick out of it. <laughs> over and over. After the fourth one. Wait, what? So that was it. Was it? That was a drop kick and a body press. That was it. Who is darn camera guy? I want to like shoot him. He needs to be down lower. I, I couldn't know. See I don't know floor. why that was like that. That's before they hired midgets. Um, <laughs> I have another one that's kind of interesting too. Wild Red Berry, before going, it was 1949. Wild Red Berry was one of the first guys on the mic that really got people pissed off. He could talk about anything for hours and hours and hours. Always, shut up, shut up, shut up. He's just talking all the time. Anyway, he has a match here with Angelo Martinelli. Uh, 1949. Uh, you got that one, Marissa? Uh, we're looking at the highlights from the oh, nice. nation's capital, originating from Turner Arena. Maybe they had to shoot it like versus like G PG or something. Oh, no. Like you can't Wild see Red everybody's Barry. butts or something. Is that coming we up full frame for you, Marissa? Or you were not getting the bottom of it. Hole on Angelo Martinelli. Yep. Angelo Martinelli on. is on the mat, and Wild Red Barry is applying the arm lock. And he pulls his hair, and the crowd doesn't like this at all. Harry Smythe, the third man in the ring, is watching the hole. He's watching, and now Angelo Martinelli is applying the pulling of the hair, and the referee breaks. Yeah, I don't know why they're getting the hole. This is the Invisible Men wrestling, and I love it. At least we know what's going on. The, the verbal. <laughs> See, the women were all dressed up back there. They had some hot chicks at ringside. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was a nice evening you going out, that, going. You no, know. wait. You notice that the camera drops down for that though of course <laughs> also it kind of gives it like a japanese vibe the way the crowds are in japan they're just very respectable oh, they yeah. sit there and it's like they're watching us they're watching a Angelo show Martinelli it reminds is me on of the a, a, like uh, the sound and red you, barry you're is going for the fireworks show i know i just saw the fact Ooh, that uh, they're uh, working well, the arm the whole barry, time he breaks the hole very easy and angelo martinelli is amazed at the breaking of the hole and Red Barry is talking to the crowd, and the crowd looks at Red Barry. The favorite in <laughs> this match thorough. is Angelo the, uh, Martinelli. The, uh, the announcer sounds Angelo like an old-time newsreel. is the gladiator on the left of your picture. There goes a terrific arm lock, and Red Barry has a fist. And in wrestling, professional wrestling, and he has him, and he throws him over there, and he lands to the mat. And there, we're getting ready for the pin, and the referee is looking in for the pin. The excitement of the announcer also adds to the fact that he the counts arm the count of one. Yeah. So huge. Right. <laughs> and the referee. There goes Wild Red Barry. He's ready for the pin. The referee counts one. Oh, only one count, but Red Barry breaks oh, the hole. Angelo Martinelli applies another arm. Oh, that was nice. And the crowd is seeming I'm like stealing this that. At the moment. <laughs> well, it's something you can use today, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's not seen as much. And that's how it is. I also like the level of um, sportsmanship, um, communication between them. He got him in the second armbar, and he looked We're at him like, really? And the other guy said, yeah, really, I got you again. You know, so professional wrestling it wasn't only aggression. From the nation's capital. Oh, they just... Here at Turner's Arena. Nice. Angelo oh, yeah. Martinelli Roll breaks up. the hole. And Wild Red Barry broke the hole for about a 
about, about 60 seconds, and Angelo Martinelli is applying a headlock. A headlock, and he's ready for the pin. Harry Smite is the third man in the ring, is looking very careful on this bout. I see a headlock takedown coming up. Yeah. And not to use his oh. fist. No fists are allowed in this match. What? Well, oh, it's, I assume it's because it's old that they lost little parts of the film, destroyed, film. gets there. This is an illegal, an illegal hole. Well, oh, this is on film. It's the not on TV. The crowd wants Angelo Martinelli to hit Wall Red Barry. There goes Wall Red Barry. A fan comes up in the <laughs> ring. <laughs> Look how loose the ropes are. Barry yeah, the ropes are loose. Order him off the ring there. And they're not padded. The fans are protesting. The fans are protesting. Wall These fans Red just Barry get furious. They get furious out there. Oh, the murder you. Martinelli winds up. The referee wants him to open his hand. A fist is not allowed in this match. While Red Barry is complaining to the referee that he has a hard connect. There goes Angelo Martinelli. He jumps up there. And while Red Barry goes <laughs> under the ropes. And out there. There's the fan. Oh, there's Angelo. Oh, there Martinelli slings the hard right. And there's the pin round one. And while Red Barry is not pinned in this match, the match still goes on. It's Back one to the arm, work finish. the arm, work With the arm. No time limit. The last they, time these two boys they had met, good psychology there was back blood then. on the ring. Look at the grip on while that. While Red Barry and both these boys were swinging at one another, and the referee was sent to the hospital. They brought in a special referee for this match, and the third man in the ring is none other than the popular ring official from the Maryland State Athletic Commission, <laughs> Mr. Harry Smythe. I love how he hit the referee and he's blaming Red the... Red Barry is protesting. You, you all seen that on your picture? They claim... They had Red Barry rules claims that the Athletic Commission. He was hit, no and Angelo Martinelli claims he didn't hit the referee, and while Red Barry did it on we the break. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen. The same identical thing happened. The referee doesn't know what is going on. The referee is mad. He's burning up at this action. <laughs> this is wild. Angelo Martinelli says he did not hit the referee Where's on the break. Where's the uh, grandma with the big purse? Doesn't so claim. She and didn't come know, in from the, the 1960s. Are oh. Protesting while Red Barry the in the Beverly action at the moment. Grandma episodes. <laughs> Granny episodes. Wait, can you cut that volume down, Shade? With, with the um, athletic commissions and... Um, and that stuff, when you went to a new territory, would you have to learn their athletic commission's rules? No, the rules are pretty much all the way around, but you had to get a license. Yeah. Yep. You had Each to have a license. State. As state a wrestler? State, yes. Yeah. As a promoter? No, no as, a as a wrestler. As a wrestler, yes. yeah. Yeah, you still do in some places. Washington and Kentucky. Yep. I've got a few, really? I've got a yeah. few cards. Wrestling and boxing. And he did it with, by holding the trunk. Did you see that? Yes, I did. Thanks, yeah. Marissa. Yeah, you have to you have to t do a physical. Yeah, in every, every actually see a doctor, do a physical. Yeah. They write it off and then they issue you your card. Yeah, they had that here in California. Paperwork. You had to get a lot. You had to go get a wow. physical. You had to get blood test, uh, fingerprints, background check, and no arrests. And then you had to pay twenty five dollars for an application. And once it was approved, you were mailed. I still have my licenses. You were mailed and it was mailed to you. you I, a, I wish they still did that because maybe 90% of the wrestlers on, on the scene now wouldn't even be working. That's exactly no. true. They would not. You wouldn't Because they didn't have the $25. Yeah, they, not, they didn't have the $25. <laughs> oh, also, the arrest thing is... The, and, and the, the blood test. The blood Kip test. Oh, my bad. gosh. <laughs> and, and you had to have ring gear. They wouldn't use you unless know, you had ring gear. And then you had to work for a promoter that was also licensed, and he had to post a $10,000 bond in order to promote a show. And that's probably why there was it. bigger payouts for independent shows and stuff like that because you were dealing with yeah. such a higher level of business. The way you you know how you promote, you put show together in this. But if yeah. you went through the athletic commission, you have forms. And you have a form for every wrestler that's put on. You have to have a card lineup for the whole week. You have a certain amount of tax you pay on that. You have to buy tickets by a licensed and ticket agency. They have to be numbered and they have to be counted. And you have an athletic commissioner in your box office the night of the show to count the tickets and to check everybody's uh, the card or their license to make sure they're up to date. You have to have a doctor in there, listen to your heart, check your blood pressure before every match or they won't let you go out. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Pass those tests. Huh? Oh, that was back then. Yeah, I mean, you had to have all that. Here's $5 order. and a pack of smokes. <laughs> you had to order and run the show. And then right. you had to have a $10,000 bond. Breathe for me. <sighs> a $10,000 <laughs> bond in order to run the show. Oh, well, yeah, a lot of independent wrestling companies now are just like, I shouldn't even say companies, places are just like, all right, let's put a show together. 
That's it. <laughs> I at least try to get insurance but and all that what stuff. What this would cut out is, like Nikki said, it would cut out the guys who aren't really wrestlers. You know, the guys who weren't trained properly, they didn't. They have to come with uh, a promoter has to be, be able to know who's coming in as a referral and has a senior work from somewhere else. They just don't put you on the card. Just say, yeah. okay, come on. I wish they did that because then you would have people, well, you wouldn't have people like anti-superheroes yeah. on cards. I believe in TJ, you have to do it, actually take a test. Like they make you yeah. do roles in the ring and things like that. I heard that. Yeah. Get it's like a whole exam, yeah. like a physical exam you, and everything. I think if you're... I don't know if you're from there. I mean, I've never had to do it, but that would have been cool. Well, the, right. go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just have to throw this in right now. Um, if you shop on Amazon.com, um, please go to the AfterBuzzTV.com first. Click on the banner because we get a kickback of of the money that you spend, and it's no cost to you. So if you shop on Amazon.com, go to AfterBuzzTV.com first. Click on the banner to Amazon.com, and de then do your shopping because that's how we stay on the air. Sorry, Rick. Oh, no, that's, that's and they something have, uh, simple you can do. Yeah. They have gift cards. Oh, you're yes. so kind. Thank you. I was just going to say, <laughs> you shouldn't have pulled that out. It's, that, that, that's, stolen it, it's a beautiful this. thing. <laughs> Here you go, that one's from Christmas. My you think? To me. <laughs> you, you know how, what gave it away, sir? <laughs> how today, like, you know, like, for example, you guys just came from Vegas and you took someone along to see if they could get on the card. They didn't have a license. They wouldn't be asked to even come on there. And then you got to have, they want you to have uh, tights and boots. You gotta have all that stuff in order to work, and the matches were done much better. I mean, they knew these guys were there to, to do a job, and they're getting paid for their talents. They wouldn't let street shoes in a, in a ring. Nope, never. It's, they want that bottom, that smooth bottom on the. It, right. They don't want you tearing up their canvas. Where did it go wrong? You can't wear street. <laughs> you can't wear street shoes in a in a roller rink. You Where gotta have the stuff. When, when they, they started stuff? letting people wrestle for free, so you can save money. Exactly. Yeah, but when did this all like? I just don't. When, when did they, they stop doing the physicals? You know, like now there's I'll more you stuff that goes on now. As, oh, I know like, when too. Go ahead. Well, I, 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 no, I, go I, ahead. Go ahead. In the eighties. Yeah, when, when uh, they admitted everything. Yeah. Right. Vince McMahon declared it entertainment, and he got to the athletic commission. They now want to pay taxes. Nineteen eighty-one was it? Around then. It's like. Maybe oh, even pissed, possibly seventy-nine. That pissed off a lot of people. Oh yeah. Eighties well, is also when. AIDS came out. Yes. So where yeah. blood tests would probably be more important. <laughs> um, and now they don't have them anymore. Well, I ran a show in Bakersfield back then after that in uh, at an arena there. It was a great arena. In fact, it's still there. And it drew, I guess, I think around five or 600 people. And it was in the round. It's made for wrestling. And the Athletic Com Commission came in and said, we want to see all your stuff. And I said, there is no Athletic Commission jurisdiction here. This is, we got rid of that. They said, no, no, we need entertainment tax. I said, you're not getting entertainment tax out of me. So they sent me a bill for $75, and I had a little red bullshit stamp, and I said, bullshit, bullshit, and I sent it all back to them. I said, I'm giving you a dime. Never heard another word out of them. <laughs> wow. they, they wanted to get money somehow. No, nope, forget about it. Not Sounds like happen. a Bassman move. Yeah. You oh, move? yes, My yes. Move? No, no. Sorry. You don't want to throw the first name in there. Yeah. But did you have a big giant stamp it for you and then another one lick the envelope? No, no, no. That's a bad I still have a stamp in my garage. Now, that'll be an official, that'll be an official uh, terminology coming down the line. I know. <laughs> it's like kayfabe. It's a new term. I know. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> but I went to Oregon. I had a license. I went to Minnesota. I had a license. I went to Montreal, Canada, and the promoter had my license ready for me when I got there. Which right. should, that's how it should be. Yeah. Right? How about yeah, Hawaii? Did you need a license for Hawaii? I had a license for Hawaii as well, yeah. Well, let's yeah. say you're going to work in Hawaii and the promoter's paying you to fly in the morning of the shows that mm -hmm. night, um, would would someone in California give you the physical and then no, they would forward the, it on to they Hawaii? Would, like, they would forget the physical when you come in there and he'd just get the commission to give me a, afford me a license. He was vouch for me. I did a show in, I remember doing a show in uh, Laughlin, Nevada, where they had a doctor on site right, mm -hmm. that they just took your blood pressure and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So. They always had a doctor ringside. They're really yeah. se serious in Nevada. At least in Mexico, yeah. they just put a coat on somebody. But what was nice, uh, what was nice about the, the doctor we had here in L.A. was Dr. Bernhard Schwartz. He had an office in Watts, and he was a, a, a very good surgeon. He saved a baby's life by pulling a safety pin out of her lungs in surgery. I mean, I actually, was good. But he dealt with welfare patients, and he was the guy for the wrestlers. So Jack Armstrong and I, every year, we had to renew the license. Come out at 630 in the morning. He is the only time I could see it. Would drive out to Watts at 6:30 in the morning. His office was kind of dingy and kind of looked like an old Amos and Andy movie. There's cobwebs all over. Don't piss on the floor. Don't do this. Don't do that. And he comes in. He pulls out a syringe, and you can see it was all corroded. Tests your blood. Squirts it in the sink. Oh. It, it, it takes a, oh. a chest X-ray. There's no film on the camera. And he says, "Can you see across the room? I want to see your opponent." I said, "Yeah. Okay, you pass." <laughs> but he was a really good guy. He'd be at ringside every Wednesday and Friday night. 
And if you were sick, you'd tell him. And he'd just hold out your hand and he'd pour you a bunch of antibiotics and just take these, you'll be fine. That's your kind of doctor. Just That's my kind of doctor. Passing off the pills. I said, I said this is really <laughs> no. funny because back then steroids, steroids were legal. And I asked him, I said, I need some Dianabol. He said, just go to your pharmacist and have him call me. So I went to Savon. I think it was one of them. I said, I need 100 Dianabol. The guy says, uh, where's your doctor? I said, Dr. Schwartz, give him a call. He gives him a call and Schwartz would answer the phone. Hello. And he says, I have Rick Grayson here. Give him anything he wants. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so funny because that's how it was. I mean, it's just how it was. But he had to be at ringside. And there's guys that really got hurt. You know, you'd have to check them out and stitch them up. But um, that's the way it was back then. It was actually kind of fun. Now, Glow, Glow had a sketch making fun of that whole thing. They called right. it Dr. Feeling Grope. I saw that. I remember <laughs> that. That's how it was. Okay, I have another one. Um, yeah, we have time here. All right, I'm going to give you guys a little treat. Don't laugh at me, please, because I'm a very sensitive man, and I have extremely sensitive nipples. <laughs> um, this, is, uh, this was done in 1976, and somebody sent me this from Gulf Coast Wrestling that I was able to get, and it's a little bit really blurry. I don't know what the quality of it was, but it's a little promo, and I'm talking about California, and then I have a little quick match in the ring, and that's me right there, if you can see. The one with the glasses and the, yeah. the Beatles hairdo. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you got volume on there, Marissa? They didn't have volume back then. Yeah, we had volume. <laughs> <laughs> back in the olden days, when they marched 20 miles uphill in the snow both ways. You got to audio? School and back. It's a wrestling school and back. Yes. <laughs> there is audio what, there. Uh, was this uh, interview There's before audio. or after the, uh, the dirty group needle? All right, hold on. Be quiet. Oh, okay. oh, <laughs> this is oh. all about me now. This guy on the left reminds me of Mr. Rogers. Where's the audio? <laughs> well, I wonder if... They can hear it out there, and we can't hear it. Somebody anymore. finally we, muted we, Rick Drazen. Oh, Congratulations. Well, let me tell you universe. what I'm saying there. <laughs> we can hear it. Oh, you can so hear it? Okay. Everyone else can hear it. I don't know why you guys can't, but maybe we can I, hear Maybe it. I'm not in tune with my own it voice. Might, it might help for my our common, commentary on him. <laughs> All right. I was talking about how it was nice in the South and I'm from California, Grayson. and they said that he's an actor, he's a stuntman, he's this and that. And then we do this. And that shirt I have on was made by a fan's mother, and she took bandanas and made the fabric and made me a shirt out of, like, 20 bandanas. I still have that shirt. Now, is this pre no pinky or oh my god yeah that's just like this is 76 oh, so you, didn't, you couldn't use it in your promo when did the pinky come off in 2000 oh that recent yeah i knew something was gonna big was gonna happen all right now we go into i thought it was y2k but i guess yeah, they, they'll, they'll go into my match here in a second. that's just y2k all right come on quit talking Rick. love the do i had nice hair and a mustache. That's my Tom Selleck look. Was that the original mustache? It does. Right? It, that's what was in style back then. It was then. in style, yeah. I had done a lot of cigarette commercials with that look, actually. Everybody. Dr. Schwartz couldn't prescribe you the Propecia. Is that what happened? <laughs> you actually. <laughs> <laughs> Propecia. I'm going to get We're smacked. doing a commercial <laughs> now. He looks like a gym teacher, right? Like, <laughs> play dodgeball, fat kids. <laughs> hey, you know, how, you know how often, you know how often so I got So tell your mom I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> you know how often I got that Ben Stiller thing? He looked just like Ben Stiller. Right there, yeah, definitely. A, a muscled-up Ben Stiller, how's that? Yeah, I know. All natural. Just whistle, high shorts, high socks. Dodgeball, kids. <laughs> Hyperbolic chamber. <laughs> that should have been your gimmick back in the day, the gym teacher. I, I swear there's a match after this. I don't know how long, but it'll be there. Oh, you know how oh, long oh, you gosh. can talk. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It also reminds oh, here we go. me Who's of... That guy? Uh, He's the announcer, Mr. for God's sake. You, were, you weren't even alive then. That was like Elton John. <laughs> yeah. Before he like got excited. What, what year were you born? <laughs> I think that might be my father. What year <laughs> <laughs> No comment. Oh, I Same like thing it. your father said. <laughs> I was born on Ju June 10th, 1985. All right, this is June 7th. 83. All right, here Brilliant. we go. This Happy is, birthday. This is the, wow, in the WA. That's me in the red jacket over there in the back. And that guy I was working with, I can't remember his name, but someone emailed me and said they knew him still. A little TV, a little TV station. It's kind of fun. That looks like a hard boxing ring, sir. It's a hard ring. I was just gonna say, the is that you in the onesie? <laughs> He's in the red right there. There he oh. is. Oh, there he is. Baywatch. I still have that jacket. Hey, you can sell it to the Wrestling Hall of Fame. I own all his stuff, and he <laughs> doesn't want him anymore, so it's, it goes to me. Fern sniffs it. Hey, you, you've got a good presence to you, Rick. <sighs> you do. You, you're very. You can. See the confidence. It's in the hair. You don't have hair now, so it's no confidence. <laughs> I'm not like Samson you lose or Hercules or whoever lost his hair or lost his strength. I have no balance with one ear. So well, You're not well, a okay. small guy. How big is that guy? This is back when you can move, huh? Oh, yeah. I wish you could actually hear the commentary because it's pretty good. 
Oh, big arm drag. <laughs> that dude's big. Yeah, he's pretty big. Not as big as the Rick, though. <laughs> I love how wrestlers were big and they look like your uncle who couldn't get a job nice. and was a mechanic. That was nice. How was how were the rings back in the day? Stiff. Yeah. Very stiff. They were boxing, converted Looks boxing like. rings. Bo I can't even say it. They were hard. It's because you're around me, sweetie. That's yeah. why. I've been in a few. <laughs> you're I've having been, a double negative. I've been. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in a few wrestling uh, boxing rings. I've started training in a boxing ring that spring. I wish we had a, a better video and audio. Did he just spin a rooney out of that? You haven't been, to, been in a ring until you've been to a Japanese ring. Mexico. Oh, God. They have razor Mexico blades just, sticking out of it. <laughs> hey, why do we even need a ring? Let's just put carpet on the cement. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> That's, is that why they roll instead of taking bumps That's on the hip tosses? Absolutely. That's brilliant. There's a nice backdrop. <sighs> Not for him. By the rick. <laughs> You're, you're facing like the real old school looking wrestler, but you got some nice tights, the good tan, white boots. Oh, Jack yeah, good style, Rick. You got that surfer dude look. That was it. That was an awesome jackknife. Yeah, that was good. And for you people out there, jackknife is not a power bomb by Kevin Nash. That, that what looks is like it? a small ring, huh? Yeah, it's pretty small. 16, well, like, 16 foot? No, that's either. a 14 yeah. or 13. Yeah. Really? That's yeah, small? It's, it's for uh, a video. A lot of old school places like NWA used to do that. Thanks, they say you can rarely find a ring but that small I, I was, nowadays. I was lucky to have somebody send that to me. Only for Jello Wrestling. I'm talking now, if you don't <laughs> mind. I was lucky to find that because it's hard to find old footage of stuff you did. Channel 13 back in the day, they recycled their tapes every week. They never kept a library of matches over the years, Mike LaBelle, oh. and he was too cheap to go ahead and use new tapes all the time. They're the big two-inch reels, so he said, why should I house all these reels when I can keep just recycling? So there's no history to that's the day of that. That's what the AIWA did. Yeah, it's too bad. Not yeah. just that, but that also wears out the, the, high, the, the, quality. the quality of it the does. film. It does. Yeah, it wears it down. Um, it's just too bad there's not much around. Then Channel 13 had a bunch. And they had a fire in their vault. Of course, that happened. The tape was gone. Mm. They're Just supposed to keep footage. If it, if it airs, they're supposed to have some sort of record of what aired on your channel. At least they used to be. Well, you think. I mean, they didn't have digital files back then. They could keep anything, so it's just well, not there. If only iTunes was around back then. I guess sports. <laughs> they, they, they had iTunes, but it was called MeTunes, Looney Tunes. Tell us about iTunes. Tell us about iTunes, Chris. Well, if you had iTunes, first of all, iTunes backs their sup stuff off on, I imagine, many, many servers. So even if one of those, the cities of those servers went on fire, there would still be many other copies of your stuff. Why would you set that on fire, sir? Some, I don't know. I wouldn't do it. Would you? You no. could find them on the, the Zimbabwe server. Right. <laughs> Africa, Zimbabwe server. Culture. <laughs> iTunes is keeping culture alive, making it relevant, getting, getting it to you in the easiest way possible. You have some people that aren't even great computer users that know right. iTunes because it's nice, it's simple. You could get whatever you want on there. Just type it in. It's, stuff is fairly cheap. You know, you could go on, watch our show there, listen to our show there, our podcast, rate, comment, tell a friend. Well, one thing I do like is that you don't have to, and you'll remember this, buy an album. People don't even know what an album is. Uh, but you have to buy the whole album to get one song that you like. <laughs> uh, always. Yeah. 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 So you can buy the one song that you like on iTunes. You don't have to buy the But whole I love all my Justin Bieber albums <laughs> and songs. <laughs> You just buy the album for the pictures, man. Such a nerd. It does. He's going to grow up to be a strong woman. Did you know he is actually <laughs> grown up now? Yeah. It's a nice, rebellious lady. <laughs> yeah. All right. You guys uh, all know Freddie Blassie, right? Yes. Love him. He was great. Not personally. He's not here anymore. He was a hell of a guy. Um, he always had the blonde hair, you know, and the uh, pencil neck geek and all that kind of stuff. Well, this is when he had dark hair. And he's working with the other guy, Wild Red Berry, who I said was the big mouth of the South. It's kind of an interesting well, match. In you don't know, Red City or Sacred Easy explaining about the oh, we have commentary. Have I'd love to see some old footage of Carl Lawler. He never wrestled. No, but in, you know, announcing oh. or in something. I'm, I might have some. Actually, I think I have some. Freddie looks so different. <laughs> well, the fact that Bolt's eyes work. Wait a minute! <laughs> These guys worked a little stiff back then. You see, that's not a universal spot. It's a shoulder block, and he went down, and then he went from there. It's, you know, not the same. You, know, you either cover or pin or choke, depending yeah. on whether you're face or heel, Chris. Not bad guy or good guy. 
A lot of people don't understand face and heel. It's easy. Face is good guy, heels bad guy. Yeah. I can't understand my face, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm talking about the normal world. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Normal? Natural born heel. I can't help it. Sometimes if I'm like telling a story and someone did something nasty, I'll be like, he, he went on a heel turn and then the other person doesn't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I use the word K. I love how the fans look how the fans go crazy. Going get I mean, well, they really go, they go nuts. They hate him so much. I mean, this is earlier in his career, but yeah. midway towards the end, a fan saved the rotten egg for two months, and when he went to go see him at a live show, was about two feet in front of him and threw it at his eye, and that's how he lost vision. That is a fun fun fact. Wow. And he's also been stabbed in the calf twice. Really? That's why he had a limp a and a cane. A lot of stuff back then happened. You had to be very tough back then because well, a lot of wanted to fight you. Have to a lot of wrestlers had guns, knives, bodyguards. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. They would have to sneak out. Oh, the heel, the heels got uh, Coke bot real. They had real Coke bottles and yep. not right. just Coke cans. They were uh, hitting the head with beer bottles and Coke bottles. Well, not only that, Cheryl, they'd throw bottles into the ring and they'd hit the ring post and they'd break and splatter all over the front row of people. you get glass all over them. A lot of that would happen. They would, ha they would hawk loogies on people. They still do oh, yeah. that. They oh, still yeah. do that in other countries. I know they do. I heard a story that one time they threw a shoe horse at Stan Hansen once. Oh. I guess it's a credit to how good you're healing in, in this yep. day and age. I heard that in uh, the year 2000, Triple H was actually receiving death threats. Yes. Yeah, Sergeant Slaughter got it when he turned on America. This guy can work a wrist lock. Oh, and yeah, the I fans could just on a wrist lock. If you can get a death threat when wrestling's oh, look, admitting it's fake. He's actually holding a real... A real <laughs> That's pretty good, right? Yeah. I just love that every little movement nice. trying yeah. to break away is right. showing that he's frustrated, he's in he, pain. He took the fingers to take him down. Mm -hmm. I would love it when the they would grab the heel's beard and pull him down. Yep. Selling was a lot better. They actually sold everything. That's why the fans got pissed. Yeah, how dare you pull that guy's fingers? That was evil of you. I used to like working with Rock Riddle. He was good at that. He's very good at it. Still is. And balls in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, like the one time he covered me. You see facial expressions? How important they are? It's like an old horror movie. Yeah. Well, they're they're involving the fans. Outrage. And that's what you need to do. Yeah. Oh. Rabbit punch. I do donkey punches. <laughs> The best matches Disgusting. are... But even at that, look at his response. ...are detail-oriented. All the details are in there, the little nuances. It's not just one move after another. I like, too, how the ref, you know, assists in this era of realism and really, like, struggles to pull the heel off, you the know? The referee is very important in these matches, and even today they're important, but people don't take advantage of it. I remember I would try to do that when I was refereeing for a while. People were like, why do you get too involved and too close? Because that's what a referee should do. Exactly. You want to break it up. You're... He could have done your vampire move there just now. <laughs> <laughs> I only bite people in the right ear. What are you, a boxer? No, I don't have a right ear, so you shouldn't either. <laughs> but you see how they stay with the arm. You see, went back to the arm again. It's the psychology of taking that one thing and whittling it down. But I like to put 20 holds on. No, you don't want to do that. Why not? You always go back <laughs> to the... Just went over all work, that. Work, work, want it. Pick exactly. something and keep working it and working it and working it. Why let go of something that already works? Exactly. These guys knew what they were doing. Look at that face expression yep. and everything. Even his comb over is just oh, all. Oh, so they call that. They call that a surfboard hold. That that's changed. Yeah. Disheveled. Let's take some. Oh, look at that reversal. That's Malcolm. pretty interesting. They used the ropes a lot back then to break things. I love how they went directly back to a, a lockup. Yeah. After every separation, lockup, lockup. Well, there's not a lot of um, heel moves here right now. I mean, there is, but there isn't. And that's what you would do if you were yeah. grappling. See, again, he goes for the ropes. This is what pisses the fans off, the psychology behind it. A technician. Now he blocks him, see, from the rope. They were all technicians back then. Exactly. You can't, nobody, uh, more than half of the workers now don't even know what being a technician is. See how he went and reversed the rope too?
Who was considered the best technician of like this era? Besides Fern? Of like the old, the 50s. We're not talking about the, eating. Uh, I don't know. There's so many of them. Well, I know Sue Sexton was a really good technician, but that's a female. You're talking male. You're talking to anyone, I she guess. Was, she, she was, was this good. Far back, though. No, no, she wasn't this far back. Um, she was 70s, 80s. She was See, a good they work in the wrist the whole match. Back and forth, back and she forth. She came out of Australia. She was trained by old, totally old school. She paid attention to all the details. She's been over my house. What woman hasn't been over your house, right? Not many. My mom has probably been over your and house, and I don't who, even know those it. Who yes, haven't, and those she's who been haven't, over to his house, but has she been over to his yeah. house? She, a lot <laughs> Notice of, the resemblance. There's an open-door policy there. <laughs> Are you my dad? Yeah, my mom was probably just cleaning the house. <laughs> 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 and stealing things. Like all you consuelas out there. <laughs> all the old wrestling footage. <laughs> And then you. that's when we say pero yeah. en la Your mom was Hazel? No, my mom was Connie. <laughs> <laughs> that went right over your head. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was watching a match. Actually, Wild Red Berry looks Yeah, cool. right. <laughs> working the arm the whole match. Okay, how about this? Your mom was Alice? From Brady Bunch? No. <laughs> okay, now you you understand. Because now I'm paying attention. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a long, long way from the ropes this time. You can see them, but he sure can't feel now he's It's not a hard match. Remember they used that in the last match. Blasty trying to keep him away from the red. However, decides to reverse and somersaults right back into the hole again. <laughs> now he does the psychology thing, right? I used my head that time. There's a you know what though when in the in the small um amount of time that they had to actually dedicate to stuff like think this I think the crowd enjoys it you yeah, remember WrestleMania 17 Benoit and angle had a pretty good um, yeah. like hold to hold match and the crowd loved it oh yeah they love it I don't know why they don't do this more I don't because know. there's a lot of wrestlers that can't do it they probably can't do it and a lot of matches are only three minutes long because that's people's attention span See, he's right back to the same thing again and again and again and again and again. And this is what the, the fans... The computer generation. Yeah. Everything's faster, quicker. Even on uh, TV shows, just regular whatever movies and stuff, they actually move stuff so fast that it just looks like a wipe in front of the camera. You know, just some action's going on, some big fight, and all you see are arms going like like flying. You can't yeah. even see the action. Yeah, they do the shaky cam thing. Yeah, that gives everyone a headache. Why I don't like the Matrix. That. I cannot watch the Matrix for that reason. The sh sh it's just shaking camera. Everything's going everywhere. The action. Yeah, that drives well, me crazy. Well, they get too close to it, so you can't really even see it. You know, like all the fights and others are right on top of you. You don't even know what's going on. It's, it's really just a shot of the director's belly or something. Yeah, pretty much. I, I know, I know. <laughs> it's so messages. aggravating. I'd like to see what see you throw one of these matches like on your shows. Just one match and see the crowd reaction once in a while. They'd, they'd all go, go get up to go to the bathroom. They, they'd boo the hell out of it. Would they? Are you yeah. know for sure? I know for a fact because they just don't appreciate. Not if you got them involved. If you really I, got them involved. You would have to plot minute. somebody it's in there. It's not Wait just a being a technician, though. You have to be able to... Uh, no, I know. The, uh, suck the audience but, but into your world. It's like what we were talking about earlier. It's just everyone wants to see the fast pace, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. They don't want to see the in between stuff. They However, just want to see Matt, boom, bang, good night. I want to see Rick Jason make a comeback. However, yeah, me too. Well, However, he just said, <laughs> This is fun. I like this. Look how the crowd's getting involved. You like it. She likes it. We like it. You've got to give it a chance. See, what's going to kill you to put a five minute match in old school? It won't. Well, I guess a pay-per-view or, or a show or something like that is the way to stick it in if, because the, the audience is captive. <laughs> if they're great, if they're great uh, showmen and, they, and they're technicians, it would work. Okay, find me two guys in the indie scene that can do that and I'll put well, them on the well, show. Well, you can that do that. Aren't, that aren't boring. Look, look we, had, just... we had Dallas Page on here. We had Mike yeah. Sanders. We had Nigel McGinnis. All three guys agreed. Less is more. Go back to the old school thing. Sell the audience and, and you've got a match. And they all believe it. And these I guys agree. have all worked currently. But see... The reason, and we spoke about this a couple of days in training. Yeah, they don't have that theory anymore because it's not like back in the old school days. There was only two people running WWF and WWE: Pat Patterson and Vince McMahon. Right. Now you have like 20, 30 guys, and they don't communicate with each other, and they're all writers. Right. Because the middle guys didn't know what to say and know what to do, so then you got writers to write stuff for them. So it's like, okay, good, we got 
their stuff. Hey, why don't we just do the you know main eventer guy stuff and write their stuff? Yeah. Okay. What happens? No one makes any characters. No, no one is like yeah. okay evolves or gets born into. But you know, and, and there's no overarching story between all the all the mid mid level. There's games. a huge but there. But you have the opportunity to do that on your shows. Okay. Well, who? <clears throat> but honestly, who? Besides the very select few, because I was lucky enough to learn it when I first started, who who teaches telling a story anymore? You have guys that come in that you know they just want to learn moonsault. We do this every Tuesday and Saturday. We go through that with everybody, do we not? Yes, we do. But that's what I'm saying. It's not. I mean, that's you're an exception. Yeah. You know, out there, it's just kind of like, how fast can I get on a show? And And I want to get all my moves in. Yeah. And 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 look at the most exciting guys like uh, or. Like a Shawn Michaels or or Mick Foley or Rey Mysterio or Edge, they made their careers, you know, doing high spots or something really flashy, and that's what everyone wants to get. Yeah. I, right. I love flying. I'm a flyer. I, I like it too. But I think it's icing on a cake. Yeah. Make it make sense. If it makes yeah. sense, right. you know, if it's part of you you telling the story. You don't want to eat just frosting. You, right. want, the, no. you want the body <laughs> and the do. match, right? No, well. Well, high flying right, can make right. sense, you're you know, right. like if you're going to hold the if whole. If that's what you do. You make them look silly, they, they you know, beal out. And then well, they had high flyers here too, but you still had the storytelling. You have to have a reason for what you do. And if you can't do it on the ground, you do the high fly for whatever it takes yes. to get to that point. And it's a story like any, uh, if you, there's a formula, like uh, a regular TV show. Right. you got a beginning, middle, and an end. Right. And He's right. But see, everyone just wants to well, do the Well, that's kind of like ending. a day in my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hopefully guys like uh, Del Rio and uh, Daniel Bryan can uh, keep putting on quality matches. and yeah, those They're kind of bringing it back. Yeah, those guys A little bit. Mm-hmm. But you don't have to, you know, you still have an indie show that right. you do. You can still do it on an indie show. You find a couple of people. I know you can do it. You okay. find someone to work with and do it. Yeah. And that's probably one of the reasons why just straight squash matches are aggravating because there yeah. is no story. Nope. Story is he got beat real quick. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, like a filler. Like you might as yeah. well throw a commercial in there or something. One guy big, one guy weak. Well, Fern, you know this better than anybody. <laughs> one guy strong, one he guy He worked weak. the wrist, back to the wrist. He worked the wrist, then he reversed, he got the wrist. Then he went back to this. He dodged the ropes, the ropes, the ropes. He didn't let him go the ropes that time, and then he got it on him, and he went for the ropes. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that's the way the, the fans see it. They say, oh, well, he did it, he did it, and now he can't do it, but this one did it, now he can't do it. And they buy into that. And that's what it's about. You got to build it because a lot of things like independent wrestling, they would have started out like that. Yeah. Did one part and then went to something else, changed the whole, and forgot about that. You it's could, like, why did you build up with that and you, not stick with it? You could take that match nowadays and use it, and then you'd stick in maybe one, maybe two high spots. Yes, exactly. And, and it would sell. Exactly. That's it. And that's the way old yeah. school was. What are your high spots? Throw one or two in there, and then the rest is work and just connecting with the audience. That's exactly right. Now, uh, you can also do that, but like, like what Nikki said, you need to find workers that can actually do it. Right. Because... You can learn how to do moves and all that. It's not hard to learn them, but to actually put them to make sense with your character and mm-hmm. just portraying them and, you know. Perfect example, last, uh, last night I had a match um, against this kid, and all he wanted to, he, we were going over our stuff, and he seemed to get some concept of some, st- we had a storyline going, you know, and he got out there, and he's supposed to be this character that's picture perfect, which is, in my mind, you walk out there, oh, cameras, take pictures of me, you know, um, like he's supposed to be this. Take the time. Kind of like Austin. Um, yeah. Gets in the ring, and, and he's just leaning against the ropes. So how is how am I going to get the crowd behind me when that's all you're doing? But then, oh, my God, in the match, he kicked me in the head twice. Like, those were his moves. Or he'd forget a spot and not not know how to get back into it because there was no story. There was yeah. nothing that he can jump back into. He was just like a deer in headlights because he's like, oh, I forgot oh, the I exact can't stand that. Yeah, I've, that I've, I'm uh, supposed to do. Yeah, I've seen that too, where it's like someone messed up. It was their mess up, yeah. but they went and did like a big slap to someone and hurt the other person right. just so the crowd would get back into that. Well, he just wasn't. It was properly. just a well. It was you know. It was just a disaster because if you if you have if you know the steps to a match and the idea that you have behind it, then anything. If you forget the whole match, you could still go in and do a match. Exactly. You know, yeah, it's it's like we, going into a restaurant. A, but that's like a lost art nowadays. Yeah, I know. We got to wrap uh, yes. up. We've been an hour, so. Uh, you want to promote your show again? June 24th, Monrovia, California at uh, 7 o'clock, DCW main event, Brian Cage Brian Kendricks versus Famous B, the world champ Los Luchas and Utomo Dragon and 
Well, Ultimo Shamu and Dragon Mask for the titles. So, Nikki, you're on that show as well, right? Yes, I am wrestling Amanda the Bloodthirsty Vixen. And also, I'll be doing Lucha Vavum August 9th. Tickets went on sale yesterday, so get your tickets because they're going to sell out. LuchaVavum.com. And I'll be on that show doing an old school match, too, with Fern. <laughs> well, I, I say we do it. I think we should. Uh, and rickracing.com for my books, my videos, and anything else you want to buy on my website, it's all on there. And Chris, you've got a website as well. Yes, go to daddydoyle.com if you like making fun of sports and wrestling, where uh, satire, humor, and uh, comedy and all of the above. Daddydoyle.com. And Cheryl, let's talk about what you're doing. Uh, let's see, Cartoon Network. Yep. Uh, in the fall, Incredible Crew, I'm on that. And also uh, www.com. Little Brat. Oh, that's right. Your website. Yes, Your website. I do have a website. It's a nice website, too. Yeah. Cool. Come on down. Well, thanks, you guys. LittleBrat.com. It's a little old school lesson, and I think we had a good time. And stay tuned next week for uh, old school wrestling and also SmackDown After Show right here on AfterBuzzTV.com. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Buzz you later. Buzz you later, Snark. Beach on that one. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.